Hey everybody, I am David, executive producer for Stonewall Day and host for a new series Pride Live is producing called Stonewall Generations, where we talk to LGBTQ plus leaders who make a difference every day, keeping the memory and the history of Stonewall alive. And I am super excited to be with someone today. I'm not gonna even pretend it's a secret. It's Adam Lambert. Um, so Adam's with us today. We're gonna hear a little bit about the work that he's done in the community and specifically with Pride Live and making this whole thing, the Stonewall National Monument Visitor Center a possibility. So I'm, I'm gonna stop wasting your time. You don't wanna see me, you wanna see Adam. Let's bring Adam out. Hi. Hi, Hi. Hi. how are you? Good, 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 good. Thank you for having me. Thank you. I appreciate it, this is so exciting. Uh, Hi everybody. I'm gonna leave you with Adam. <laughs> Boom, right. here I am, solo. <laughs> We're gonna ask you some questions, Adam. Gonna ask me some questions. Yeah. So queer history runs deep, but it's often overshadowed or suppressed due to bigotry. Yeah. Considering this, why is preserving and honoring LGBTQ plus history important? Well, I mean, it's the, the, to combat the bigotry and hate. I think we have to know where we came from. We have to know our history. We have to know our story. Um, you know, our community is uh, is getting bigger and bigger and more diverse and becoming more and more mainstream, which is a wonderful thing, and it's something that we all want. But in that process, it can be uh, it can easily, we can lose sight of some of where our origins are. So I think the, the Stonewall uh, Visitor Center that we are here commemorating today that is going to be built in the next year is an amazing way for people to come and visit, to educate themselves, to understand the legacy that has been left behind, and to hopefully affect the future generations of the world. So your time in the industry has been full of incredible successes, I'm sure valuable lessons. What is your message to future generations of the LGBTQ plus community? Yeah, speaking of future generations, yeah. I, you know, I think there's so much work that has been done and there's so much progress that has been made, but progress is never a straight line. It is never something that is, that is uninterrupted or, you know, not resisted. So right now we're experiencing in our country, we're experiencing some pushback from uh, you know certain forces, the you know the extreme right, um, and I think that makes now more than ever a time to galvanize young people, make sure everyone's equipped with the information and the history and the mission of moving forward. These are going to be future voters. These are going to be people that are going to make change in our country a real thing. So this is more important than ever. And you've been inspiring <clears throat> future generations throughout your career. You've been able to give back in incredible ways to the LGBTQ plus community specifically. The Feel Something Foundation is a great example of this. Yeah. Um, what piece of advice do you have to those in the LGBTQ plus community who are looking to give back but just don't know where to begin? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I understand wanting to get involved. I think um, that, that feeling kind of came over me really strongly you know, five or six years ago, I realized, you know, this is, I had been working a bit with different charities, but I realized that I wanted to take it even further. It's something that I know we all feel. Um, uh, I think, get online, find a, an organization that resonates with you. Um, it could be Feel Something Foundation, it could be a number of different organizations out there. You know, you have things like GLAAD, you have Pride Live, you have the Trevor Project, to name a few. Um, volunteer some time, make a donation. Um, even the simple act of reposting something on your social media is a great way to help amplify and to, to pay it forward. Uh, but hopefully you'd be willing to do even more than that. So get involved, ask some questions. I know all of these organizations have amazing people working for them that are really open and welcoming to new support and new help. So we are gonna sit down for a conversation for the new series, Stonewall Generations, and you're gonna get a sneak peek, but you're not gonna get the whole thing. So you have to stay <laughs> tuned, you have to follow us, you have to set notifications. Woo! But right now, I'm gonna sit down with Adam. Yeah, an official. Yeah. I don't know if they're meant for like traipsing around the streets of New York, but I was like, okay, we're gonna walk. Okay, boom. <laughs> <laughs> At least they're flat. <laughs> you let us know when you are ready. Go right ahead. All right. Cool. So we'll kick it off. Yeah. All right. So, hi everyone. I am David. 
host of Stonewall Generations, which is a series for Pride Live where we sit and talk to LGBTQ plus leaders. And I am sitting with an artist who some might say their superpower is high drama. <laughs> uh, um, uh, but Queen, let me tell you, it's actually, it's actually making people feel something. Um, and it's more than just incredible talent or a voice that can truly make you believe. It is the fact that this person is an activist and an LGBTQ plus leader that actually cares and is not afraid to get their hands dirty. And I'm trying to keep myself composed because I am a fan and I am sitting here with the incomparable Adam Lambert. Thank you. That was a beautiful intro. I'm so flattered. I blushed a little bit. I, I was like, oh. I blush all the time, so be prepared. Uh, I'm so excited. Thank you for doing this for yeah, us. Yeah, my pleasure. Um, you've been a proud member of the LGBTQ plus community, out and proud member of the LGBT uh, community for a long time with a long history in activism and philanthropic work. You get your hands dirty, as I said. Why is this project, the creation of the Stonewall National Monument Visitor Center, so important? Well, Stonewall, uh, the, 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 the riots that took place, uh, this is like, mainly considered by many, this is sort of the kickoff, the birth of the gay equality liberation movement. Um, this is sort of the epicenter where people attribute it starting here on Christopher Street. I think having this visitor center be developed with all sorts of information inside, uh, a way to, to, to come, it, it's, it's a way to have a sort of pilgrimage if you're a gay person in the world to come here and realize the, the power of that event. Um, and, and putting a visitor center here and, and making it official, it reminds us that we are real, that we are here, that we are a force to be reckoned with. And knowing your history is really important. I think it makes us stronger, it makes us prouder. Mm -hmm. And we know that pride is a very, very important thing to our community, uh, and it has been for, you know, since the 60s in this movement. Um, it's in all this about, space. in this space, it's all about, you know, finding your pride and who you are, and your family, your, your, your wider family. And I think, you know, uh, as the, the, the queer community gets bigger and bigger and more powerful, um, you know, the idea of what community is can get a bit watered down. But something like this, I think, will help us and remind us of what that community is. Yeah, I, I get excited when you say that because when you say family, I immediately think of Pride Line. And I'm, I'm fairly new to the Pride Line family, though I've been a fan of our founder, Diana, for years and years and years. Same. Um, She's the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, but I've heard about you from day one. Oh. Obviously, I know about Adam Lambert, the artist, but I've heard <laughs> about your work in this organization from day one. What made you get involved specifically here and get involved so just deeply? You know, I just, I, the more and more people that I've met over the years, I, I, you know, meet people that were kids when I was first on television, for example, that say things like, oh, you know what? You were the first, you know, out gay person that I would sit and watch on television with my parents, mm -hmm. which facilitated a conversation with my parents and let me come out to them. And I heard versions of that story now more and more, and I think. It just dawned on me that, you know, yes, first and foremost, I'm an artist and a creative, and I want to create music and entertainment that centers around my experience, much of which is the queer experience. But it's it's more than that. I wanted to get involved in other ways and try to affect change. Um, so I started Feel Something Foundation uh, a few years back, and we've been partnering up with organizations like Pride Live. We, we helped put together the, the Stonewall Day in Los Angeles a couple years ago, which was a big concert. That was so much fun. Which folks should know that it was 2021, and <laughs> the rest of us were just trying to figure out how not to be in pajama pants. Yeah. And you, <laughs> did, yeah. you, you decided to not only perform headline, but you also curated in partnership with, with Pride Live. Yeah, that was really fun. Really yeah, I just, you know, I think being a queer artist has been such an interesting journey. Uh, the, you know, the mainstream music industry in 2009, when I started, it was very, very straight -washed, you know, because that was what the deal was. And coming out onto the scene and, and trying to do the mainstream, you know, pop music circuit, if you will, was, had its, had its challenges. It wasn't easy. It was not a, an obvious uh, path. And, and I learned a lot on the way. And what I love is in the past 
13, 14 years, the change that has happened in the music industry for queer artists is incredible. You're seeing way more of us on the scene, a, a, a much more diverse representation of us on the scene. And now it's been proven that you can be a queer artist and it doesn't mean you only have queer fans. It yeah. means you're a, 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 a real viable uh, success. Um, and I think the, the industry is paying attention to that and, and investing in that and that's an exciting time. And part of that has to do with visibility um, and representation. Mm -hmm. that's the, that is the key. That's how we got there. Yeah. You know, when, when someone sees somebody like themselves on television or hears somebody that identifies, identifies as they do on the radio, mm -hmm. it helps us realize that we're okay. It helps us realize that we have every right and all the same rights as everybody else to be successful and to dream and yeah. to be whatever we want to be. And I, I will say that you were that for me in a lot of ways. Oh, thank you. I am an old school fan. I am an Aussie, and for those that don't know, I'm a big Wicked fan. <laughs> you were in Wicked. I um, could not be pulled off my couch when you were on American Idol. Um, and you mentioned 2009. That was also a big moment for me because 1969, the Stonewall riots happened. Yeah. A movement is formed in New York City and in the world. And 40 years later, you think that we had made so much progress, you hit the stage at the American Music Awards. And there was this backlash. And I remember being shocked that people were shocked because I thought we had we'd gotten somewhere. Same. I, well, I was equally as shocked because you know, I was coming up in, in Los Angeles amongst other you know, queer and, and you know, allies and, and, and wild, crazy artists. And so my experience was a bit of a bubble. I was also coming to New York a bit, doing some auditions, and I had friends here, and it was just those two cities weren't really telling me what I didn't know about the rest of the country and the rest of the world. And that was sort of a big eye-opener for me, is you know, smooching a dude on, on you know, a, an award show performance, to me just felt like it was just a bit cheeky and, and you know, a little mischievous. Mm -hmm. And the reaction it got made me go, oh, that's what I'm up against. That's what we're going to be dealing with. There was so much of a double standard, uh, probably also because I was a, uh, a guy and that I was out. It wasn't just a suggested, you know, two women kissing for the, the straight gaze. It was for, you know, a real representation of what I'm actually about. And it scared the hell out of me. Yeah. And it, you know, and this was a really interesting time because not that long after that, we started the fight for marriage equality. I mean, it was all sort of in that same period and that same wave and you saw the country sort of you know grappling with the reality of that and all the debates that came around that and how marriage equality became a symbol for equality in general uh, and and it was a, an exciting time because you also saw a lot of allies come up through the woodwork that I didn't realize we had mm -hmm. in the way we had them I thought our community was we were just in it for ourselves and we were sort of um, there to fend for ourselves, yeah. and the allies that came out in droves for us during marriage equality was amazing. Yeah. Many of those allies I actually have met along the way as an artist, and I have a lot of fans that are, that are allies that don't necessarily identify as queer, but they are in it for the good fight, you know? Well, I think this is a lot about.